Okay. Okay. Well. I, I don't even know what real life is anymore. The Dallas Mavericks lose again to the New York Knicks for the second time in about a week. Yeah, not even. Six days. Losing this time in Madison Square Garden. 106 to 103. Luka gets his, I think, 14th triple-double of his career. That's cool. It's like his sixth overall of his season. That's cool. That's a typo. I see there on the board, KP had 20 points. I would correct it, but then that would require more effort than the team showed for the night. Okay, uh, let's cut to the chase here. The Dallas Mavericks fall again. Now they are six and five on the season. Six and five, one game over five hundred. I had to think about that for a moment. It is. It feels like a far cry from when this team was five and two. They have now lost three of four to fall to six and five on the season. And KP was not good once again. Now, his percentages weren't terrible. He was 20 points. Ignore the 10 on the board behind me. 20 points, 11 boards, and an assist. 7 of 17 shooting, 1 of 5 from 3, and 5 of 5 at the line. 3 blocks and a steal. Hey, great. Except you didn't dictate the game at all. You never came close to to taking over the game. You did most of your damage at the foul line, I feel. No, not really. Five of five. Whatever. A fourth of your damage at the foul line. Uh, Luca, Luca was good in the third quarter, but you know what? For those who have been waiting for me to finally criticize Rick Carlisle, like legitimately criticize Rick Carlisle, here it is. Luka Doncic went nuclear hot at the end of the third quarter. And how did Rick Carlisle respond? By sitting Luka for literally the first six minutes of the fourth quarter. That makes sense. The Mavericks fuel a comeback in the late third quarter behind Luka and, to a lesser extent, KP. And Carlisle's response is to sit both of them to start the fourth quarter and pretty much let a, a group that hadn't done anything the whole night, try and put something together. Now, Powell had some moments in this game. He finally had some moments. Hell, he got uh, a tip-in with .1 on the shot clock. That's impressive stuff for a quick tip-in. But all the same, <laughs> the story remains the same. The story I've been talking about since the preseason remains the same. Dallas does not have a true third man on this team. Yes, you got Powell with 12 points in 29 minutes, four boards, two assists, five of nine shooting, one of one on threes, and one of one at the line to complete an and one at one point. That's great. That's all nice. You still got some what used and abused on defense. As a result, your plus minus is five. You know what, though? To be fair, he's the best plus minus on this team. Oh, my God. I don't put a whole lot of stock in plus minus, but it is what it is. Um, beyond that, you have Tim Hardaway Jr. The I I'm convinced. Hold, excuse me. That feels necessary after another game like this. Um, Tim Hardaway Jr., who I'm convinced is a double agent from the New York Knicks. Not seriously. Uh, he had 12 points as well, four boards on four of 10 shooting, two of seven from three, two of four at the line, and hey, a block and a plus one for whatever that's worth. So if you're on the Tim Hardaway Jr. train, all aboard. This is the best night you can look forward to most of the time. The Mavericks, uh, the Mavericks desperately, 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 desperately need a third man and in terms of the style of play and the comfort of Porzingis on the court 
they might be making this third man more so their second man right now. KP can give you KP can bring a lot to the table. I am in no way concerned about his long term viability. It's so early. I'm still in like the hey, we're game eleven of eighty two. There is so much season left to be had, left to be played that I'm not going to hit the panic button because that just sounds stupid and premature at this point. But this team needs a lot of help. Beyond Luka and KP, most nights, they've got nothing. I'll call out right now my greatest disappointment of the night, of the season to this date. Seth Curry, 23 minutes, 2 points, 2 boards, one assist, one of five from the field, zero of four on threes. Seth Curry is the guy that I went to bat to most for after the 2016-17 campaign. If you've been following this channel for a long time, even before Mavericks content became a nearly every other day staple, a weekly staple, every other day, whatever, of this channel, you know that Seth Curry was my dude on the Mavericks. He is in a world of hurt right now for the Mavericks. I don't know what's going on right now, but two of the last three games, the dude looks like he can't do much of anything, and it is hurting this team. He was a starter again for the Mavericks. I don't know what Carlisle is trying to do. You know, I criticize sitting Luka Doncic and KP on the bench to start the fourth. Luka to sit on the bench for half the fourth quarter. It doesn't make sense. I get you played him like the entire third quarter, but you have to, have to, have to play your big money player, not literally in terms of actual dollars and cents, but big money in terms of actual productivity and helping your team win. You have to play him in the big moments or else why have him at all? Why even Why even have the reigning rookie of the year I get that he got a triple-double. Hey, that's a nice accolade. That looks good on a freaking freaking consolation prize that means next to nothing. Luca even said himself this week, talking about this game, he even talked about how, hey, we need to, as a team, help Porzingis. Here's the – let me find it here. I got the quote, actually, from Luca. This is from Dwayne Price on Twitter. Luca doesn't think he's an MVP candidate. And he has bigger team goals ahead of his individual goals. Quote, there's a lot of great players, amazing players, Doncic said. I don't care about the MVP award. Obviously, it's nice to get it, but I just want to get in the playoffs really bad. Luka doesn't care about individual accolades. So the fact that he got his 14th career triple-double and the fact that he's 20 years old, hey, great, awesome, sweet. He's all we got right now. He is all we've got right now in terms of production i know kp i said earlier gave us 20 points it was a very quiet 20 points other than his put back dunk at the end of the third quarter to tie it up at 87 all very quiet meanwhile we're getting uh we're getting freaking dunked on figuratively speaking by the likes of marcus morris senior julius randall and to some extent, the Dennis Smith Jr. revenge game I warned about finally came true. Dennis Smith Jr. in tw excuse me, 30 minutes, 13 points, 6 boards, 8 assists. He was on a triple-double watch. Now, I know his rebounds weren't super close at 6, but he was at the cusp of a triple-double watch off the bench for them. They haven't played him all year. He's done nothing all year. And frankly, no offense to Dennis, I don't expect him to do much there. Because I don't think the Knicks know how to actually legitimately develop talent and to nurture them to reach their potential. But to what I said, it's the revenge game. He was extra motivated coming into the game and he let it show. So the Mavericks, uh, God, Mitchell Robinson freaking killed us too. 16 points, 8 boards on 7 of 8 shooting. Good God. I don't even know what to say about this team right now other than this stresses the need for that third guy because, hey, 
bench mob, whatever fun little uh, marketing tool we want to put behind them, nickname we want to give them, it's not there, man. It's not there. It's not there night in, night out. Bobin got a lot more minutes for the Mavericks tonight. Uh, let's see what he did in terms of the answer being to give more Bobin minutes. We got 15 minutes, 10 points, 5 boards, 1 assist, 4 of 7 from the field, 2 of 2 at the line, and that, that's pretty much his stat line. I like Bobin. I do, but 15 to 18 minutes a game feels about right for him. That's pretty much where he's been at his entire career, whether we're talking San Antonio, whether we're talking the Clippers, whether we're talking the 76ers, or now in Dallas. That's pretty much where he should be. And so I don't have a problem with that being his minutes cap. I don't have a problem with the fact that we didn't see Courtney Lee. You know what I do have a freaking problem with? The fact that we got zero minutes out of Justin Jackson on the night. Justin Jackson is shooting better than 40% from three tonight. And through two and a half quarters on the night, the Mavericks were shooting something like 11% from three. They were abysmal, abysmal shooting threes tonight until the Luka Doncic show at the end of the third quarter. So what does Rick naturally, naturally do? Sit your ass down. Sit your ass down. I'm going to run a lineup out there with DeLon Wright, with Dorian Finney-Smith, with Seth Curry. Uh, I think Bobin was out there. And Dwight Powell. Sure. Sure. No creators. I mean, I say that I <clears> – <throat> I say that in terms of this season. 16-17 season, Curry was a creator for the Mavericks. He didn't do much creating right now. He was pretty much running the point guard position for us. He was a combo guard back then. He was pretty much running that position for us on that team. You're not seeing it right now. You're not seeing it. You know what? Because I can... This is this is how, how short, uh, short-sighted I am. I can see... People complaining about the Kristaps Porzingis stat. So there you go. I updated it on the fly. On the fly in the video. Now, as you can guess, not my first one. Not my first one of the night. It's been one of those nights. So that is the season right there. That is this recent three out of four games. The Mavericks are in a place where it's pretty much the Luka or nothing show. KP has been in a rut, and that rut continues to deepen. Again, his his production for the game, not bad, but if we're talking about a guy that, at the time the Mavericks traded for him, the, the belief around some people was that, hey, KP could be like the 1A. And I said it too. I've, I've said it for a while. Luka is your 1. KP is your 1A. That could still ultimately be the case, but I'm going to acknowledge KP's your two. You're solid two, maybe your two B, depending on how long this draws out for at least this season. Now, I still think ultimately, uh, you know, they sign him to a five year deal. I still think ultimately you're going to see him be the number two option, but Dallas is going to have to figure something out because if they want to be a playoff team, this is not it. Dude, the Knicks were 2-9 and nine on the season. Their only other win was against Chicago. They have lost multiple games by 20 points this season. How did Dallas respond? How did Dallas respond by being that third win of the year for the Knicks? That is humiliating. The Knicks shot 45% from the field compared to 43% for Dallas. Field goals from three, 43% from the Knicks, 22% for Dallas. 82% at the stripe for the Knicks, 9 of 11. The Mavericks got to the line a lot more, 22 of 31 for 74%. Better, but not enough. The Knicks, more turnovers, so hey, Dallas, fewer turnovers, 11 to 17. Dallas out-assisted the Knicks 22, or 21 to 20. Rebounds, they lost the rebounding battle 53 to 44, including 15 offensive boards compared to 12. Seven blocks compared to two. Ha! Huh? A lot more fouls committed by the Knicks 27 to 16, and the Knicks had two technicals, which were, you know, whatever. But Dallas has a lot to answer because it seems like uh 
it seems like that mid-range game and against some bad teams, oddly, the three-point shot is really good for opposing teams. And I don't know how Dallas needs to address that because they've put in a heightened focus on the defensive side of the ball the past week and change, and it has not yet shown any any benefit. Now, I understand if you really dial in on something, it's going to take a week or so to really start to produce in some cases, but this is this is really, really... If anything, I think they've actually gotten a little worse on that end, or at the very least, the neglect that they've been paying to the offensive end of the court is hurting them more because they went from averaging 113 points per 100 possessions to now here they are. When was the last time they did that? Overall, in the last couple games, I, I mentioned earlier that they've lost three out of four games. I'm curious what they've done overall in the last three games in terms of total point production. They had 102. They did get 138 against the Knicks, so they got it there. Or excuse me, the Grizzlies, so they got it there. 106 against the Celtics and 103 against the Knicks. So that that best offense in the league in terms of points per 100 possessions, that's gone. Doesn't matter that Luke is balling out. Doesn't matter that he's playing like an early season MVP candidate through 11 games. It doesn't. Now, Luca's three point percentage is kind of crap right now. I'll say that. If, if we want to talk about a place to criticize Luca, sure. Because there are people on this channel who think that I don't criticize Luca. Luca takes too many tough three pointers. He takes too many step back threes because he's playing kind of like a James Harden style of play instead of taking a little bit more spot up three point attempts. There are other guys on this team who can at least reasonably, reasonably uh, create for this team. Luca needs to let them feed him for spot up threes just like he expects kp to finish spot up threes for him to get the assist he needs to set up uh he needs to accept the setup from guys like delon Wright, um you know seth curry or whoever they're running in there they've not run jj brea very much this year but they need to find some kind of balance like that because this team this team feels a little bit directionless whenever luke was off the court and it feels like they're digging themselves into a hole that then they're like, all right, Luca, six minutes left. Dig us out of the fire. Like, what do you what do you want? You, you sat me for the entire time that I was hot. Why do you think I'm going to suddenly be able to turn it on and produce a win now? In some cases, that works. But in others, when you've been sitting for six minutes of game time, which is much longer, obviously, in real time, yeah, obviously you've had time to cool off a little bit, especially when overall for the night you've not shot the ball especially well. So let me let me let me spotlight Luca's actual three point shooting on the night. It wasn't a fantastic percentage for Luca. Luca three of twelve on threes. He hit those threes back to back to back at the end of third at the end of the third quarter. So the natural assumption is, hey. Sit him down. Give him a second to catch his breath. I understand you can't play him the entire fourth quarter. I get it. You played him most of the third. But maybe, just maybe, there's a way to more eloquently manage that time. Because if you haven't noticed, this team kind of falls apart when Luka's not on the floor. When they don't have their real offensive threat and playmaker on the floor they kind of fall apart whenever you have the mavericks trying to create with delon wright and dorian finney smith and hell even seth curry he's been really bad this year at creating beyond just spot up and even that hasn't been in the last couple games that great whenever you run him out there it's not good it's not this team needs to figure things out or they just need to trade for someone to help them figure things out. Because Lucas' three-point percentage is kind of crap this year. Real talk, kind of crap. He was 32% a couple of games ago. I don't know what he is now, but another three of freaking 12 on the game is not going to help him. 10 of 13 at the stripe. Hey, he fixed the, he fixed the free throw percentage. That's cool. I'm happy about that. He had a block in this game and three steals. I'm happy about that. 36 minutes, 33, 10, and 11, 10 of 23 from the field. 
I'm overall pretty happy about that. Doesn't mean I want you shooting 12 threes a game. Just like I talked about how KP was taking a lot of threes. He actually dialed back a little bit. He was one of five on threes. Still not a good percentage by any means, but at least he wasn't taking eight, nine, 10, 11 threes in a game. You have to create better than that. You just do. If this team is going to be a playoff team, they have to create better than that. And not just with Luka. DeLon Wright, you were you were presented to us as the silent steal, the sleeper steal of the free agency period, even though you were technically a sign and no, you weren't a sign trade. You were just a trade. A trade, and then we signed you to a new deal. You were presented like you were supposed to be this great asset to us and you've shown flashes you have i'm not trying to take that away from you i understand you have not started regularly you have been in and out of the starting lineup your minutes have been up and down but in this game you gave us let me see here dude you gave us 22 minutes off the bench four points Two rebounds, two assists, one of two from the line. Excuse me, one of two in field goals, two of two at the line. You took, you got 22 minutes. You gave us two shots. I understand your value to this team is more than just your offensive side that you can contribute, but two shots no 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 you have to give us more than that you do you have to provide more to this team if you're going to be as some have talked about you being that third man people have talked about tim hardaway jr he's been crap for this year except for one game at best in other games he's been okay tim hardaway jr is one name they've thrown out there DeLon Wright is another name they've thrown out there. Neither of them have proven worth their salt. Dallas needs a new third man. Now, this is, and unless they make a trade or unless Luka continues to play at not just a MVP candidate level, but an MVP front runner level, this team will not. I mean, this, this is an early opinion. I could easily be proven wrong. This team does not look like it could be in a playoff team. That That's just a simple fact. Like, we've seen them, when they're on their game, they can play LeBron and Anthony Davis both playing out of their minds. They can play them right down to the buzzer and in a game that, they, frankly, they should have won. We can see that. We can see them play the Trailblazers, who even though they haven't started quite the way they wanted to this year, by the way, the Trailblazers just saying Car- signed Carmelo Anthony. Any, you'll appreciate this. That's a huge loss. They can play a team like that, the Trailblazers, and be right down to the final minute, right there, really un- overturned by a coach's challenge. They can be that close. They can play these good teams that close. But for whatever reason, you've now run them out there against the Knicks twice in six days, both obviously at home and on the road. They were humiliated by the Knicks six days ago. Their response? To lose a closer game on the road. What? KP played worse in this game than he did at home. He was at least a factor for a, a three quarters of the first game. Luca's dominance was way more, way more impressive in the first game. We we need to talk about this team overall, not just the absence of the third man, not just the absence of like interior defense and a true center, not just Dwight Powell's inefficiency on defense. Yes. He had some moments in this game. Hey, good for him. He finally showed up for the year. We need to talk about this team and, uh, the coaching. I say that, uh, 
I say that not as a not as a person on the bandwagon of hey, get a new head coach in here. Because who are you going to get right now? Who do you think you're going to get? No one. You're going to have an intern head coach. It's stupid to even consider that for the like five percent of people who insist that's the answer. But for the others, I would say it's okay to criticize the coaching. I've criticized the coaching lightly throughout this first 10 games, now 11 games. I would say now we've seen enough to see a trend, a troubling trend, if you will, with the Mavericks and the way Rick Carlisle balances minutes for some of his stars. I understand wanting to balance and control Luka's minutes, but I also understand that taking him out of the game to start the fourth quarter after he just single-handedly brought the Mavs not just back into the game but knotted things up completely felt like a rather strange, not admission of defeat by any means, but certainly a certainly a concession to start the fourth quarter. Like, all right, all right, all right. Yes, fine. I'm fine with starting this game off, or sorry, this fourth quarter off with six, eight, or, I don't know, nine points. Nine points down in the fourth quarter. It's fine. It's fine. I'll get Luca back in there after uh, the midway point of the fourth quarter, and we'll see what he can do. What? Dude, you have to manage it better. You have to understand the hot hand principle. You can still get Luca rest. It doesn't have to be half a damn quarter in crunch time. Not... Crunch time is the NBA stat where it's the final five minutes of a game at five at or under five points. But crunch time as in the fourth quarter in general when it's when a game is tied. Like, I, I don't get it, man. This is this is one of those losses that's going to stick under your skin for a while. And we're just going to have to figure out how to deal with it. Because, yeah. It's game 11 of 82. There is so much of the season left. It's not worth letting it completely soil any good feelings or good vibes that you've had about this team early on in the year. But what did I say? I I projected 5-5 through the first 10 games. I wasn't that far off, right? Like, we're 11 games in, and here we are, like, we're pretty much lockstep with a 500 team at the moment. So we'll see, man. I'm not I'm not going to judge this team. I understand there is so much of the season left that we can get things going. Hopefully we can get Seth Curry back in action, playing like the player I saw in 2016-17 and the player I hoped they were re-signing, the player we saw flashes of in the previous few games. I, I see that. Hopefully they can get him back. Hopefully they can get DeLon Wright playing back more like a an actual impactful playmaker beyond just the freaking defense. Hopefully they can bring that back to this team because if you get the bench mob back reinstated and you get Seth Curry actually making plays for you, not just spot up threes, but actually making plays, this is a good team. But right now, unless you have those guys going, this looks like the team that everyone said you were, where they looked at you and said, Luka is a potential superstar. KP is an all-star caliber player, if 100%. Everything else is just okay. Okay at best. That's where this team is. So, I've already been ranting long enough. Uh, I'm more than a little buzz so forgive me if this was not my best stream but uh this that's the state of the mavericks the past few few games for me so that's all my time for this stream thank you for watching let me find the actual thing thank you for watching until next time remember every legend was once a prospect salute